Hi everyone, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz and it has been a long time since I've shown you how I dye my dip dyed broken violet gradient. So today I want to show you how I dye two skeins at a time and get similar but not quite dye lot colorways. I love using Wilton's Violet because it has red number three and blue number one. And these colors break into magenta and a really nice vibrant blue. And so using one pot of dye, you can get some really stunning color gradients. In this dye bath, I have added two tablespoons of white vinegar um, to 11 cups of water. And I'm gonna bring this to a heat and then add the dye immediately before we start dip dyeing. Unlike some of the other colors I've done on the live stream, Wilton's Violet tends to go extremely quickly. Um, and so I try to wait, I dip dye slowly, but then as soon as I see blue start to hit the yarn, I will add the rest of the yarn in so we can suck up as much of the blue as we can. I use the salad spinner to take out a lot of the water from the, from the pre-soak in the yarn. And in this cup, I have one cup of water plus one whole teaspoon of the Wilton's Violet dye. I like to use a half teaspoon of dye when I dye 100 grams, so I've doubled the amount of dye to dye 200 grams. And I'm now going to reduce the heat, add the dye, stir it up quickly. Wipe the dye that got on my fingers off before I touch the yarn. And then I like to grab the yarn through the loops when I start dip dyeing. And I put it in, take it out, and each time I go a little further. Do, do, do. And if I need to, I have the tongs on hand, and I'm always watching for the color to start going blue. And then, that's when I know I want to add the rest of the yarn quickly. And with these super wash nylon blends, the yarn, the dye binds to the yarn so, so fast. So you can see I'm wiggling this end a bit because sometimes there can be some white spots stuck in the middle. But it just goes super fast. And you can see that there is still some blue in the dye bath. But this will absorb the yarn pretty quickly. I'm gonna make sure my heat is on low and set a timer for five minutes and then come back. But the rest of the blue will probably absorb to the yarn before then, I'm just uh, giving it plenty of time. It has been five minutes, and you can see the water is now clear. So we can remove um, our yarn from the dye bath. And you can see on here that there's a lot of variation that we get within the blue. Um, okay, it's hot. But I want to drain off as much of the water as I can. But look at that deep purple. When the dyes strike so fast, like they do in super wash yarns, it can be a little more difficult to get a super even gradient. Um, let me show you in here. So this is the reason why like, I will kind of move the fibers around a bit in the pot. You get some lighter shades in the middle. And in this time, you can even see that there are some blues throughout the yarn. And that's just something that happens with the, the superwash content of the yarn. I think it's a superwash more than the nylon. When we use the 100% wool yarn, it's easier to get a more even gradient because the dyes don't bind the yarn immediately when it strikes. So now I'm raising the heat back up on the pot to bring it to a boil again so we can do um, two more skeins of yarn. We are back at a boil and this one batch of Wilton's Violet seems to have a bit more red crashing out because the water doesn't always get pink 
like this in between batches, but it shouldn't affect the overall color very much. All right, now we are gonna add another cup of, it's just a cup of water with a full teaspoon of Wilton's Violet food coloring. Stir it up, make sure I get the dye off my hands before I touch the yarn. And I'm gonna bring the heat up for a second until we start to see some bubbles. Actually, I'm not gonna, I'll just leave it at medium heat while we start. And let's start dipping. So you can, once again, I have my hand kind of in between the skeins and I have the second hand held closer so that way I can have some nice control over it. And I am slowly adding more and more yarn to as I dip up and down. And so you can see that the yarns get slightly less um, pink whoop, as we go. But then, oh, we've got the blue. So that means I'm going to quickly, quickly, quickly add everything else. Um, yeah, because if I wait, if you could do it fast enough, then you can get the really, really bright blues. And you can see that there's just blue left in here right now. I'm gonna reduce the heat. So the more vinegar you have, the faster even the blues will bind. So the harder it is to get a slightly brighter blue. I haven't tried going down to one tablespoon of vinegar when starting this, but yeah, I think that we got some really pretty colors. And so I'm gonna give this five minutes and then we will remove the yarn. Five minutes have passed and the water is clear. So I am going to turn off the heat and remove the yarn. But you can see that we got a nice deep blue all the way up to our deep, deep, deep purple. I'm gonna let a lot of the water drain out, but since I'm not dyeing any more yarn today, I'm not trying to conserve as much as I can in the pot. But now I need to let all these yarns dry completely and then I will rinse them with uh, some cool water once, you know, once the yarn is completely cooled. Cool water and some liquid dish soap and hang them up to dry. The yarn is cool and ready to wash. I'm gonna add a little bit of the Dawn dish soap to my rinse bath. And now add the yarn. So you can see that very little color comes out of this when I add the yarn to the bucket. Maybe a tinge of pale blue. Um, but it is basically clear already. So I am going to wash all the soap out of the fibers. I am going to rinse it until the water runs clear and then I will put the yarn back through the salad spinner again to remove excess water so it will dry a bit faster. But I will come back and show you the finished dried yarns. Here are the finished dried yarns that we dip dyed into Wilton's Violet to break the color. In the first two yarns that we dyed, we can see we go from the deep purple magenta to the medium purple, all the way almost to a very pale blue. In the next two yarns that we dyed in the same pot, the blues ended up being a little more vibrant. From showing you this technique, you can see just how quickly, as soon as you see the blue start to hit, you need to add the yarn right away and kind of move it around to help that blue penetrate to all the fibers because the tying just happens so, so, so fast. We use the same dye bath for all of these yarns and we dyed the yarns in two separate batches. Technically, the acid concentration is higher 
with the first two yarns because we ended up removing some of the water volume when we set these aside to cool off and then we added another cup of water with dye um, which diluted the acid a bit more for these yarns. I think that lowering your acid concentration can help you get some more of the deeper blues but even so it goes really fast and so you want to keep looking and then just as soon as you see the blues start to hit add the rest of the yarn so that way that can get as much of the blue as possible. All of these yarns are absolutely gorgeous and the superwash content in them means that the dye strike you can see that there's some variation even within the skeins. Um, the color gradient is a little less even than you get when you use the 100% wool yarn because in the 100% wool yarn the the dyes absorb to the fiber a little slower um, just based on my, pers my, my personal observations and so I found that it's easier to get a much more consistent gradient from dip dyeing if you're using a 100% wool. I haven't checked with a superwash 100% wool without any nylon yet but this sock yarn is superwash, 75% um, superwash wool, 25% nylon. Even dyeing the yarns two at a time in the same dye with the same everything, you know, dye concentration, uh, vinegar concentration, everything, I would still say that there's no dye lots. The yarns dyed together are very similar in terms of tone and are pretty close with like how quickly the gradient goes, but there's still some differences to the yarns. So if you were going to knit a project using two of these skeins, I would alternate skeins every couple of rounds so that way there's not an obvious change when you switch balls of yarn. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I hope that you enjoyed this bonus video of how I dip dye yarns two at a time to create my favorite broken Wilton's Violet gradient. To see more fun dyeing videos, make sure you subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. You'll get notified when I release a new video and also when I start a live stream. So then you can join in and participate and help direct the colors that I create. Thank you so much for watching.